Okay, it was, uh, you know, it was a heck of a game today. Our guys fought for 60 minutes. They, they battled. Uh, they showed a lot of heart and grit today. Uh, didn't let the adversity that uh, came up in the game uh, affect them at all. They just kept playing. They kept playing for each other, and I'm extremely proud of them. Went well in the second half. What was the biggest difference for you? What kind of triggered all that? Well, first of all, I'm, I'm going to get you know the staff did a did a heck of a job. Now you know the offensive staff put together a great game plan throughout the game. We were able to run the ball and throw the ball both uh, when we needed to. Defensively, we made some really nice adjustments at halftime, and I thought our kids just kept battling. They, they the kids handled the adjustments and they came out and they played hard all the way to the end. They just made a decision that they were going to finish this game. Nathan probably had his best game, at least stat-wise, that he's had here. What was working for him? Uh, well, everything was working for him. I mean, it was, it was. Uh, we, we, I mean, he executed. He didn't, you know, the thing that Nathan was, the problem was, is he was overthinking things, trying not to make a mistake. Today, he just played football. You know, he, he really didn't worry about things. He let, he, he, he just took the ball where it was supposed to go, according to what the coverage gave him, and, and then he just played and uh, lived with it, and I thought he did a really nice job. What changed for him? In terms of his approach? I think, well, Nathan's really hard on himself. I mean, he wants to please everybody. He wants to be as good as he can possibly be for his teammates and for uh, the university and for the fans and everybody. And so he puts a lot of pressure on himself, and I think maybe he probably relaxed a little bit and just, you know, and just said, you know what, I just need to play ball. The schedule was a little bit different, obviously, with the game last week and no practice for a few days. Do you have a handle on how you thought the guys were going to respond to the extra time and things being out of routine? Well, I was hoping, I, you know, but uh, you never know. I mean, because, you know, we did something that we had never done before to have uh, four or five days off like that in the middle of a season. You, that's not something that the guys are used to. But, you know, we, we constantly talked about how we were going to turn that into a positive, you know, and uh, our guys did that today. They really did. And, uh, I'm really, again, I'm, I'm really proud of them. After the way things went in the first two games, how much of a, a, is there a sense of relief or win or lose just to get stops on defense, to see the offense you know, get first downs when it needed to, to see things go the way you want them to? Uh, relief, happiness, uh, it's all, all of it comes together because you're seeing the things that you've been doing. You know that uh, once the guys start executing, you know that they can do it, you know, and uh, they get to see themselves doing it. So you get to build off of it, you know, they, they get to learn from it. They know what they did in practice, how hard they worked in practice, and how it paid off in a game, and so they get to continue with that. How does that particular aspect of what happened here today affect what Nathan does over the course of four quarters when he is able to see things go well and that continue his, I guess, not overthinking? Well, you hope that uh, that he sees that, you know what, if I just go out and play football, the game hadn't changed since he started playing when he was an eight, eight years old or however it was. Uh, just go out and play ball, and, and I can do it, you know, uh, because he knows he can. You know, and he just he put too much pressure on himself. How do you think Antonio ran the ball? Oh, he, he ran well. When you saw the guy was violent with his runs. He finished runs off. He broke tackles. Uh, you know, that was big at the end there to, to pick up the first down. Uh, you know, and, and he was just, you know, he was a horse out there. He really was. Another player that stood out was Daz Newsome. He got a lot of touches. What, what do you see from him and how important is it to his Well, you, you know, you, you go back all the way back to last year, whenever the ball was in Daz's hands, he, he has a knack for making people miss and, and picking up extra yards. He's really good with the ball in his hands. So it was just a matter of time before we got the ball in his hands enough where he could make plays, and today he did that. They had Michael Martin. Carter in his first game. I thought Michael was really good. You know, you, little things that you guys won't have seen. Uh, when we threw the touchdown pass to uh, 21, uh, they blitzed, and Mike, Mike was right there to pick up the blitz, and nobody really sees that. You know, I saw it in the game, and, I mean, if he doesn't pick that blitz up, we don't have that touchdown. But, I mean, he just stoned the guy, just like he'd been in there every single snap. And so Michael's very unselfish. Uh, he, he cares about this football team, and, I mean, he had a smile on his face. Just getting back on the field, back for him, was, was crucial. They had minus five yards in the third quarter. Cole was particularly good, made some big plays in that quarter. How important was it to have a guy like that who right now is the leader, with, especially with Malik out, to perform at that level when you guys needed that quarter? Yeah, we, I mean, uh, you know, Cole is one of the leaders of our defense. I mean, he, he's obviously the guy that has, has probably the most experience of anybody out there, really. And uh, he is a leader. The guys believe in him. And they know Cole's going to give you everything he's got every single time and he's very very intelligent so he was able to handle the adjustments that that uh, jp and those guys made at halftime and he made them work larry the, the official call in malik carney's name with the unsportsmanlike penalty in the third quarter is 
Was that on the leak, and did you get an explanation for that? He was uh, after the fumble on the kickoff, and as those guys were running off the field, we had some guys that stepped on the field and were chest bumping with them, and uh, Malik was one of those guys, yes. Coach, what goes into coaching these maybe wide receivers um, when a lot of the passes are, you know, maybe behind the line of scrimmage or just kind of five yards? I mean, how do you kind of coach these guys to legally hold their blocks and kind of keep going? Well, they, I mean, they, these guys know in this offense, it doesn't matter whether you're throwing a five-yard pass, a pass behind the line of scrimmage, a, a 40-yard pass, or you're running the football. We, we're going to be physical, and, and they know that they've got to be able to block, all right, if they're going to be on the field. If they can't block, they're probably not going to be out there. So we spend a lot of time blocking, you know, because that's the, you know, being a complete receiver is doing the things when you don't have the ball in your hands. That's what it takes. You know, that means that the team is more important than you are. And uh, I thought our guys did a nice job of that. I know we had a holding call on one that uh, we would have liked to have not had, but uh, those guys are battling out there. Can you go a little off topic here, Coach? Uh, today is the 11th anniversary of Mike Gundy's um, for Young Man uh, rant. And you were on that staff. Any, yes, any memories of this being the, the 11th anniversary? Of I remember every, every detail of it, actually, yes. Yeah. Yeah, I was special, right there. Anything special to share with us? <laughs> I mean, I don't know what to say. It's been said a thousand times. Uh, you know, Mike's uh, Mike's a heck of a football coach, and that was a uh, a unique situation. Uh, you know, Mike was uh, you know he was speaking up for one of his players, and and uh, you know I was not in the room when it happened, but I came in right afterwards, and I didn't get to see it until Sports Center that night. You know, and so uh, I had to go over across the street to see Mike and and. Uh, Talk to him about it. Have you ever attempted an impersonation of that? <laughs> no, I haven't. No, I haven't. That's been done thousands of times, but that's not me. I don't have, I don't have enough mullet. <laughs>